In the last episode, I showed you what I was working on on the front bumper to make it a little bit more aerodynamic. Now it's time to take it out back. Maybe you've seen racer or racer civics roll into your town with these weird looking holes in the bumper. And maybe you've wondered, what the heck is that? Or maybe you already know. But here's what it's all about. The Civic has what's called a parachute problem. That is, air gets caught underneath the car and up in the bumper, and it holds the car back. Now, racers were the first ones to figure this out, drag racers. They started cutting holes in their bumpers. And then the racers said, oh, that looks really cool. Let's do that for our cars. Not that it really matters because a real racer isn't going to the drag strip, he's just rolling around on the street. But the drag racers were getting more miles per hour on the top end because airflow was moving through the car, or so they say. Now I looked at this situation and thought, man, there's got to be another way. I'm not putting holes in Slambo's bumper. There's got to be a way to solve this without messing up the look. I put Slambo up on the ramps to take a look at what was going on underneath because this was not an option. It didn't take me that long under the car to figure out it would be pretty easy to build a belly pan. Now there are two things that you can do underneath the back of a car. You can just add a simple flat belly pan or you can add strakes and turn it into a diffuser. I figured I'd start with the belly pan first. Went under there started cutting out pieces of cardboard to fit, started taping them together, and then I went a little bit overboard with fiberglass. And this was the end result of that first phase, this, this crazy monstrosity. The shape was right, but it started to get heavy and it really looked like junk, like rubbish. So I just kind of held things up for weeks, well actually a couple of months, until I was in Home Depot one day and the light shone down. I saw the magic product that I've been looking for all along. That product is Coroplast. This is corrugated plastic. It's like plastic cardboard. It's used a lot in the sign industry and the folks over on ecomodder.com, one of the coolest websites on the internet, have been using it for years to build cheap belly pants. I could never find it locally until I found this at Home Depot for like under 10 bucks a sheet. All the time and effort that went into building this cardboard and fiberglass monstrosity, well, it didn't go to waste because it made a really handy template. Drop it onto the coroplast, taped down a few corners, took the utility knife, carved it out, duct taped it underneath Slambo, and in less than 15 minutes, wham, I had my belly pan. Cutting the coroplast was simple, but I was concerned about how to attach the belly pan to the bottom of the car. Once I opened the trunk, I figured it out real fast. There's a pre-drilled hole right near where the spare tire bolts up. But that hole was filled. I just took a drill, opened it up, ran a bolt through, popped it through the coroplast, bang, that was done. And I looked for a second place where I could add another bolt, drill the hole, boom. All the manufacturers are adding belly pans and rear diffusers to their cars. Take a look at this Lexus that I shot at the New York Auto Show. They put it up on stilts so you can get a good look underneath. There is extensive cladding underneath. And if you remember back to the Mazda 6 that I put up on the lift in my buddy's shop, that work is extraordinary. And here's the thing, you can replicate a lot of that stuff on your own with inexpensive materials that you can get at the home improvement store. For not much money at all. So can you raise your fuel economy with a belly pan? Yeah, you can, and we're out to prove that. I'm gonna keep testing. I just had my best legit tank yet in Slambo, cranking over 50 miles per gallon for the entire tank. So more testing. Let's see how many tanks we can run before the cold weather closes in. I still have to do the right side on the other side of the muffler. Now, it shouldn't take me too much time to wrap that up. It's a small piece. Just need to make sure that I'm far enough away from the muffler to not cause any problems like fire or melting or any of that crazy stuff. 
If the Coroplast works out, I might switch to a different material and use this as a mold. We'll have to see where it goes.